it's really raining. <laughs> So you're planning on running a half marathon. Maybe at this point you've already run a 5K and a 10K and you're looking for the next challenge to run that 13.1 miles. Well, I'm Anna and today on The Running Channel, I'm gonna be giving you a few tips on how to run your first half marathon. We're gonna go through training, how to set your pace, how to fuel, how to tackle those long runs and all importantly, race day itself. If you're new around here, we upload new videos every week all about running. So make sure you hit the subscribe button below and tap the bell icon to make sure you get notified when we do. The half marathon is a great distance. It's one that is going to be a challenge for you to train for, but unlike a marathon, the training for it isn't likely to consume all of your spare time. And it's also quicker and easier to recover from a half marathon too. So there's less pressure on you for it all to go perfectly the first time round. So when you're embarking on a half marathon training program, the thing to remember is that it's probably going to take around 10 to 12 weeks to be ready to run the half marathon. That assumes that you've got a decent level of fitness going into it. And realistically, you should only be thinking about running a half marathon if you can comfortably run five miles in one go already. If you can't, that's absolutely fine, but you are gonna to need to factor that into your training block before you embark on a particular half marathon training program. So do be aware that it could take up to around 16 weeks to train for a half marathon. So make sure you bear that in mind when you're picking a particular race. If you've got a solid base of fitness going into training for a half marathon, then you're less likely to pick up an injury along the way. Don't leave it too tight on time either. Give yourself a bit of wiggle room when it comes to the weeks leading up to your half marathon, because that way if you do get injured or you get sick and need to miss a couple of training runs here and there, then it's less likely to have an impact come race day. A half marathon is 13.1 miles or 21 kilometers. But what that doesn't mean is that you're going to run your half marathon in twice the time it would take you to run a 10K. It just doesn't work out like that. But if you're thinking about running your first half marathon, then you probably are going to want to set a goal time. So how do you go about working out what that might be? Well, it all depends on your current and historic levels of fitness and where you're currently at with your running. When you're picking a training plan, it can be a beginner's, an intermediate or a more advanced plan. And those plans will take into consideration how experienced you are and can include different types of runs. So things like threshold runs or tempo runs. And there's more on that in our video on the running channel about understanding different paces. For any stat fans out there, the average half marathon finish time for men is two hours and five minutes. And for women, it's two hours and 23. Plus, if you're wondering about the elites, well, for men like Mo Farah, they they finish in just under an hour and the top women athletes finish in just over an hour. So there's some benchmarks to get your head around. My best advice though is to go into your race with three goals, plan A, plan B and plan C. Plan A is going to be a bit of a stretch of a goal, so something that you would be over the moon with. Plan B is going to be something a little more realistic that you'd be super happy with as well. And plan C, well, that is to finish it and say, hey, do you know what? I came and I've gone home with a medal. Since most of us will take longer than 90 minutes to complete a half marathon, you're going to need to think about taking on some fuel in the form of carbs along the way during the race. This is because your body can only store enough carbs to get you running for around 60 minutes, maybe up to 90 at a push. We are all different there. So most people will carb load before running a half marathon. So that is increasing the amount of carbohydrates you're having about two to three days before race day. That's because you can't get all of your carbohydrates from just one meal. The key here is to not go overboard though. Carb loading isn't about stuffing in chip butties and loads of potato and rice and pasta. It's about substituting some of the things out of your evening meal and putting some more carbohydrates in. So think about things with low GI, so sort of grainy breads, brown rice, brown pasta, that sort of thing. Lentils are good as well. And don't have too big of a meal the night before you race either, because that could sit quite heavy in your stomach and cause you problems with sleeping and also feel a bit blur the next day. 
As well as thinking about taking on extra carbohydrates in the run up to race day, you also need to be thinking about how you're going to refuel during the race itself. So that's where things like energy gels, sports drinks and jelly babies come into it. So have a practice with those during your training and see what works for you. The experts recommend you should be taking on between 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrates per hour. And that obviously all depends on whether you're male or female and how much you weigh. So that's why it's really important to practice during training. Have a little look and see if you can find what products are going to be handed out during the race itself as well. So you can practice with those because then it means that you don't have to carry as much with you. When you're training for your first half marathon, chances are you're going to end up running the furthest you've ever run before, which can be an amazing feeling but can also feel quite daunting too. Don't be overwhelmed by it though. When you go out for your long runs, which most plans will have you doing at least once a week, break it down into more manageable chunks. So for example, I might break it down into three park runs, or if the route that you're doing is a square, then break it down into each one of those four bits so that you know where you're at during your runs. As you lead up to race day, the last two to three weeks will see your long runs come down in volume and also in effort too. Don't reduce the frequency though. Your body's got used to running regularly, so you should still be going out the same number of times as you have been, except in the actual week leading up to race day itself. Then, depending on how many runs you've been doing each week, you should try and cut one or two out. Now, this is known as tapering, and you can find out loads more information about tapering in our video on the running channel about that. So with tapering, it's normal to feel a little bit rubbish because you're running less than you're used to and this is completely normal, so don't let it freak you out. Your long runs will probably see you running up to around 10 miles or so. Most training plans won't have you run the full distance before race day, which can raise a lot of questions like, how do I know I'm actually gonna be able to run that far on the day itself? Well, you can and you will. So the combination of the taper and having fresh legs, the adrenaline from the crowd to boost you will make sure that you get to the finish line and cover the full distance on the day. While we're on the subject of those long runs, let's talk a little bit about pace. Your long runs while training for a half marathon should be run at an easy conversational pace. So you should be able to hold a conversation whilst running. Don't worry too much about the minutes per miles or the minutes per kilometers. As long as you're able to talk while you're running, then you're going at the right pace. Learning your race pace is a huge factor to making sure that you're not gonna run out of steam halfway through your half marathon pace. So you should try and run a couple of runs during the week at your target race pace. Now don't worry too much about the longer runs that will be run at a slower pace, maybe 60 to 90 seconds per mile slower than race pace, but try and then build in a few miles into the longer runs that will be run at your target race pace. Try and practice race pace as well during your training by signing up to a 5K or a timed event maybe a park run or even a local 10K. That way you can practice your race pace in an environment that has other people running around you. Some beginners feel like they don't want to take a walk break during a half marathon race because it may make them look like a failure. Well, this is not the case at all. In fact, using the run walk method or jeffing as it's also known, can be a really smart race strategy because it can help you avoid the muscle fatigue that can start to set in towards the end of the race. If you'd like more tips on how to jeff, be sure to check out our video on that one. Enjoy the day because it'll be like nothing you've experienced before. No matter how well supported your chosen race is, there will be people all along the way cheering you on, including volunteers, so make sure you say thank you to them. Now, the most common things that can crop up during a half marathon are cramp and blisters and hitting a mini wall, a bit like you would in a marathon where you run out of energy. But if you've trained hard, you've invested in the right kit, you've practiced your fueling before race day, hopefully you'll manage to avoid these things. People do sometimes give up the mental battle when it starts to get tough and you start to hurt but don't let those voices in your head tell you you can't do it. 
If this is your first half marathon, you may have an overwhelming fear that you're going to be the last person to cross the finish line. If you're planning on running some or all of the race though, chances are that's very unlikely as there'll be lots of people who are planning on walking the whole thing anyway. And even if you are last or close to last, it really doesn't matter. Think of the achievement of getting out there and getting it done. It really doesn't matter where you come. So some tips for getting over those mental battles. Why don't you pick a mantra, something easy and positive and short that you can say over and over to yourself to help keep your mind focused on those positive thoughts. Or you could even try and dedicate each mile of the 13.1 miles to someone special. So when you hit each mile, you think about them and some funny stories, the things that you've done together, and that will help take your mind off the task at hand and hopefully see those miles tick by a lot quicker. Hopefully there are lots of tips there that will help you on your journey to your first half marathon. Most importantly, smile, look up, take it all in. It's such an accomplishment to get across the finish line and working hard through training will get you there. Don't forget to subscribe to The Running Channel for more videos like this. We upload new ones every week. We'll see you next time.